Now guess what? The reason I don't know how to make $3 billion and the reason I ain't got to worry about the how, because the how to is none of my business. See, the problem that people do is you get in God's way. See, you tell God what you want, then you mess up and tell him how you want him to do it. The problem is you can't tell God how to bless you. All you got to do is write down what you want. God will give you everything you write down. I'm telling you, it used to be a lot of stuff on here. I had to take off. You don't see no cars on here because they all in the garage. You're supposed to fail. You're supposed to fucking fail because failure is the stepping stone to success. Failure is an experience that lends to wisdom that ultimately makes you a stronger version of yourself. So the idea is you must fail a hundred times to succeed once. It's That's part of it. No one succeeds the first time. It's learning how to not get disappointed with failure, to understand failure. You only learn when you fail. You don't learn when you succeed. As long as you don't surrender, as long as you don't give up, as long as you don't quit, then you haven't failed. It just means you've made a temporary tactical retreat. It means you've made a, a brief withdrawal so that you can regroup the attack. So, as far as I'm concerned, if you get beat, unless you're dead, you are dead. You want to build something new. Don't spend any of your energy trying to tear down the old. Instead, spend all of your time trying to build the new. And that becomes the thing. It becomes the race against yourself. It becomes the race to see if you can make yourself better. You have a vision of who you can become and you're constantly racing against that person. You're trying to become better than that person. You're trying to outperform your own expectations. If you tell yourself you will do something, do it. If you try and fail, try again. Learn the lesson. Learn and grow until you are ready to conquer whatever it is in your life that needs conquering. And when you can do that, when you can set a bar that is ridiculously high and then become somebody capable of surpassing that, then, and only then, will you become the person you were meant to be. So put all the time and energy into building I've told people to learn to use a schedule. And people often hate schedules because they act as their own tyrants, right? They say, well, you have to do this unpleasant thing, and then here's another unpleasant thing you have to do, and then you have to do this unpleasant thing. And you do that for about three days, and you think, to hell with this, I'm not doing that, you know? And you fall off the wagon. That isn't what you're supposed to do with a schedule. You're supposed to use it to design the days that you would like to have if you were taking care of yourself. What I'd like you to do right now, I want you to think about your dream. Because I'm in a room full of dreamers. Think about your dream right now. What you think about it. And envision it. Dreams without goals are just dreams. Make a list of 101 things you want to achieve before you die. To have ideas and visions and dreams. And then to do any means necessary to see to it that the vision come to life. Only those that can see the invisible can do the impossible. And then there's even more power to be able to see what doesn't exist and then to be able to articulate it and verbalize it. And I know the sacrifices that went along with standing here today. We're not on this stage just because of talent or ability. We're up here because of 4 a.m. We're up here because of two-a-days. We're five a days. We're up here because we had a dream and let nothing stand in our way. If anything tried to bring us down, we used it to make us strong. We were never satisfied, never finished. We'll never be retired. Rest at the end, not in the middle. Everybody can be the best you're capable of being. And I want to tell you, if you want to fail, you have the right to fail. 
Then life's a matter of making choices. Wherever you are, good or bad, because of the choices you make. Just keeping your minds and your spirits open to the possibilities. I'm telling you, stop being afraid of the unfamiliar. I know without a question that one of the most important decisions you'll make in your entire lifetime is to better handle stress. To decide that your identity and who you are anymore, you're not going to be as stressed as you were last year or the year before. We should all become more peaceful, more thoughtful, more present, more joyous people as we age. Would you not agree? And if that's true, then it's time to start now. You know, there has to be an intentional decision at some point in our lives where we say, look, I'm not going to be the stressed anymore. I I'm allowing too much stress into my life. And please notice the words I'm using here. I'm allowing too much stress into my life. Most stress is not quote unquote real. No one hands you a plate of stress. It's not something you see and we can transact and exchange. It's something we make up in our mind. We, we make things stressful that may or may not be or have any cause to be stress inducing. You know, one thing that could stress you out might not be a stressful thing to anybody else. So that proves we're making it up. And since we're making it up, we should decide what we're going to do in the future. Are, are we going to always be stressful people or not? I know that sounds so silly, but I made that decision when I was young. I was 20 years old. And I said, look, I, I don't want to be a stressful person anymore. I used to stress about getting everything right and getting good grades. And I'd, I'd stress about, uh, you know, pleasing people and, and stress about did I fit in. I'd stress about college. I'd stress about, and at some point I said, all this is made up. You know, matter of fact, most stress is coming from usually one of two things. First is a false time crunch that we perceive. We think we only have so much time, so everything becomes stressful. Oh my God, I gotta get this done. I gotta get this done. I got this done. And we're reacting our lives to really false deadlines. Someone asks you for something, you think you have to get it to them right away. You probably don't. It's probably not a real deadline. And unless you ask them, when is the real deadline on this? I mean the point in which everything crumbles and falls apart. If you don't get it then, what, what would happen? What is the worst thing that would happen if you didn't get it that exact time? I'm crazy about this in my life. If someone says, well, Brendan, I need this by Thursday, I say, okay, if you need it by Thursday, is, is Thursday the day everything would explode and fall apart if you didn't get it? And they're like, no, I mean, no, Monday would be fine. And I just bought myself Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and part of day Monday. I just bought five days by asking when the real deadline is. Because most people, they say they want something from you when they want it, not when they need it. So your job to help deal with just the time crunch that stress can feel like is asking, when is the real deadline? And all these things that you're stressed out about, do they really need to be handled right now, this immediate second? Would it be okay if you created a plan and you handled them over the next couple of days, next couple of weeks? next couple of months, when you actually realize the unbelievable amount of time we all have as humans and how much more time we have when we become focused, diligent, intentional, disciplined, then we're not so much stressed anymore. It's like, I will get to that when the time is appropriate for that. Before that, I've got other things. I think success, first of all, is knowing my purpose in life. As I have watched and observed successful people, what I have discovered about them is they really have figured out why they're here. They really do have their act together. And, and, and knowing their purpose in life is a stability for them. So that when everyone else is rocking and rolling and, 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 and things are a little unsteady and people are kind of leaving the ship and people are kind of abandoning their causes, which th these people, they hold steady right throughout the storm because they, they have a true North Star. They truly are focused. It becomes an, it comes an anchor in their life that just holds them steady. And the anchor is a confidence based upon a knowledge of purpose. Someone said that there are two great days in a person's life, the day that they are born and the day they discover why. How would you tell us to develop
a habit yeah. of curiosity. Well, you know what? People do look at me and see me as creative because I've written so many books, and I am curious. But when I started off in college, in, 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 my, in my freshman psych class, they gave us a, a test that he, for each student to take on creativity. And there were 17 in that class. I can remember it well. And I was at the bottom of the class on creativity. I mean, I was like number 17 out of 17. And, 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 and it, what, the teacher posted the scores. And so, I mean, I saw how bad I was. And, and, and then I really felt bad, not only because I wasn't creative, but I was going to go pastor. I was going to go into ministry. I was going to teach. I was going to do sermons. And then I got to thinking to myself, I'm going to be another boring preacher. And, you know, that just gripped me. I thought, oh, this is going to be awful. I'm going to bore people all my life, you know what I mean? And, and I'm going to ask them to pay while they hear me. I mean, this is an awful deal. So, and, and, and so two things I did, and I talk about it in the book. One, one is I started filing. I started taking thoughts and quotes. And the reason I started doing that is I thought, if I'm not going to be good at what I say, I need to quote somebody that is good. And so I started filing things that other people would say. So I'd go around and I'd say, well, Ken said, you know what I mean? And Joe said, and Susie said, and so that at least I would be a little bit more interested. And that's how it started. But the big breakthrough, the big breakthrough I had was, and this will help everyone. If, if, how many of you would like to be more creative? Let me, let me see your hands, okay? How many of you would like to uh, just absolutely uh, have an imagination that just took you to a new level? You know what I'm saying? Okay. H how many of you already have that because you're on drugs? Okay. 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 Well, here, here's, here, here's, the, here's the key. This will work for you. I promise it will work for you because it worked for me. I made a major change in my early 30s from just having answers and being a leader that just had to cast vision, show everybody what I was doing and where we were going. And I started asking intentional questions. And I became a person, I ask questions all the time. Every day, I ask questions. And I have found just asking questions will take you on exciting journeys more than anything else. You're very, you excel in that, Ken. I've watched you over the years. You'd excel really in that. But for my early years, I didn't ask enough questions. And so therefore, I didn't get enough ideas and thoughts from others. So when people say, I want to be more creative, what's step one? Step number one is ask more questions. Just go to people and start asking questions. It's amazing what you'll learn.